So let's have a quick look back at some of the stories from this week that made the headlines. An insulate Britain climate change activist glued his head to the road in an attempt to block traffic on Bishopsgate in London. Now, many condemn the protesters' bizarre actions, except Bostick, who called it a brave act that we need to see much more of. The US has launched its first gender-neutral passport. Uh, this makes a giant leap forward for the rights of non-binary people, but a huge step backwards uh, by making plane crash investigators' jobs a whole lot harder. <laughs> This is an odd story. Now, apparently, many thousands of crustaceans were washed up on the Teesside coast this week. It sounds made up, it's true. It's like some kind of apocalyptic plague from the book of Exodus. And in some areas, the crustaceans were piled up waist high. Apparently, the Newcastle coastline hasn't seen this many crabs since the cast of Geordie Shore went for a dip in the time. <laughs> The Girl Guides, an organisation for 10 to 14-year-olds, this week promoted asexuality awareness towards its members. Now, asexuality is based on the view that an absence of sexual desire is a sexual orientation and that asexuals are an oppressed class. I don't know about that. You know, I know it, quite a lot about the history of the repression of sexual minorities. I don't recall anyone being tortured or burnt at the stake for not having enough sex. <laughs> and how exactly is this relevant to the Girl Guides anyway? If you've got a low libido, that's your business. Why are you telling a group of teenagers who just want to learn how to build tents and tie extravagant knots? Or I don't know what they do. You know what that... Girl Guides, I don't know. Adelaide United player Josh Cavallo has come out as gay, making him the world's only openly gay male top-flight professional footballer. Cavallo said he's never smiled so much and even added that his cheeks are sore. <laughs> I'm going to be careful what I say here. But nevertheless, uh, it's, it is amazing that there is only one openly gay footballer. But then football has always been an incredibly heterosexual sport. You know, all those team baths, uh, the colour-coordinated outfits, just a lot of male bonding. <laughs> yeah, robustly heterosexual, that. At Imperial College, the biologist and anthropologist Thomas Henry Huxley has been targeted by activists. So they want his statue removed because he had outdated views on race. And that's because he was born in 1825. <laughs> and it would be a little weird if he didn't have outdated views. Odder still was that Huxley was an abolitionist who campaigned to put an end to the slave trade. So now they've finished targeting statues of people who owned slaves. Now they've moved on to statues of people who opposed slavery. It's almost as though they're all historically illiterate and just like destroying things. Who knows? And then Joanna Lumley. Joanna Lumley has called for wartime rationing to be reintroduced to help the UK to tackle climate change. Look, we can either introduce wartime rationing, right, which will affect every person in the UK, or we can ban private jets which will only affect the type of person who is calling for wartime rationing. <laughs> so take your pick. Facebook, by the way, is rebranding as Meta as part of Mark Zuckerberg's plan to set up the Metaverse. Here's the pro promotional video that they put out. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. And it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. All right, perfect. So why is it that Zuckerberg's avatar looks more realistic than he does? <laughs> anyway, he says that the new name Meta is a more accurate reflection of what the company is trying to do as it broadens its reach beyond social media into areas like virtual reality. But they were keen to reassure users they will still be harvesting your data, forcing you to look at painful pictures of your ex and luring you into time-draining arguments about whether Bill Gates is a cloned lizard. <laughs> Here's Zuckerberg in front of his new Meta logo. And, of course, inevitably, the online memes have started. So there's this one. <laughs> and this. Oh, and there's this one. <laughs> and this. <laughs> People really... <laughs> People really, really do have a lot of time on their hands, don't they?